The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. Stove Live is presented by your locally owned independent tire dealer, someone you can trust. Are we ready to go? A little louder. Are we ready to go? This is the official kickoff to the 2015 baseball season. And it couldn't happen soon enough. My name is Dan McLaughlin of Fox Sports Midwest, and the key word tonight is live. We are live right now on KMOX going throughout the country. We are live on Fox Sports Midwest going throughout the country. So let's make sure fans across the country know why we are the best in baseball. Make some noise. We're going to have some fun here tonight, and let's show you at home and also listening on the radio what's coming up. A state of the Cardinals with Bill DeWitt and Bill DeWitt III. A chat with the manager of your St. Louis Cardinals, Mike Matheny. Who could forget what Colton Wong did last year in the postseason? He'll be with us. We need to be loud. When we introduce Jason Hayward to Cardinal Nation. And we're also going to take some questions from you, the fans out there here at Ballpark Village inside Fox Sports Midwest Live. Back in the mid-90s, Bill DeWitt and the ownership group took over. And since that time, you folks have enjoyed 12 years of postseason baseball. How good is that? Right now, we are in the best run ever of Cardinals baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of the St. Louis Cardinals, Bill DeWitt. Now, we want to have a little fun on this show. And maybe you never know, we break some news, and I'm sure Bill's excited to announce that Max Scherzer and Cole Hamels and Jason she or uh, James Shields are all coming to St. Louis, right? No question, yeah. We <laughs> beef up that rotation. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's start with these fans. Last year, 3.5 million. They come out night after night. Did you envision when you and your group took over that you would have the kind of success through the turnstiles with all the fans that come through? Well, we knew we had a terrific fan base here. Everybody in baseball talks about it. And, you know, our goal was to put the best product we could on the field, and we knew the fans would respond and enable us to continue to do it year after year. So, you know, we, we rely on their support, and, and they've been great. Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. Take a look at this graphically for those of you at home, uh, what the fans have meant and what has happened under Bill DeWitt and the ownership group. It is an amazing, amazing run. Over 1,600 wins. You see the division titles, 12 postseason appearances, the two World Series championship teams. But as you know, Bill, it's about what have you done for me lately? So how about 2015? How do you like this team and getting into potentially postseason play? I like this team a lot. I think uh, uh, John Mosellock and his team did a great job over the winter. Obviously, we had to deal with the tragedy of Oscar early on, which took its toll on the organization. But, um, you know, we, to, to their credit, uh, went out and got a really fine player, great player, Jason Hayward, who's going to be here tonight. Um, <laughs> And, and a big part of that deal as well was Jordan Walden, who uh, has been an effective closer and a, and a terrific setup man. So, you know, he will strengthen our bullpen and uh, enable Carlos Martinez to get a shot at that starting rotation. He's so much fun to watch. You know, we were talking about the great numbers 
uh, that have transpired and taken place, the, the moment since uh, the mid-90s. I'm curious, from your perspective, being the owner of this team, what are you most proud of when you look at this franchise now? And it's so healthy financially and obviously winning baseball, too. Well, I feel good about our ability to continually compete. Uh, you really never know how far you're going to go, and you can do a good job and not have success. But we've been fortunate that, you know, the players we've gotten on this team are, are year after year been a great group. Um, we had our Red Ribbon Committee meeting today uh, to nominate uh, those who will be elected by the fans for the Cardinals Hall of Fame this year. And, you know, just hearing Tony and Whitey and Red talk about what it means to be a Cardinal, um, you know, it, it says something about the history of the franchise and the culture uh, that's been built, built up here over so many years. And our goal was to, to keep it going, enhance it, and we want to continue to do that year after year. Yes. I'll ask you, how would you define it? What does it mean to be a Cardinal? Well, I think uh, what it means to be a Cardinal is, is to respect the game, to play it hard, do your best, uh, achieve to the level of your ability, and recognize the, the, the obligation that you have to perform for the fans who are so good in this city and in this community. Part of that, too, is spending money. And you have not been afraid to spend money and bring in free agents or keep the guys that you have developed over the years. Right now, and this is a kind of a state of the union of the Cardinals, payroll-wise, if you wanted to go out and add players right now as we speak in the middle of January, could you do that? We could. Um, you know, uh, we always say, and it's true, there are unlimited opportunities to spend money in this business. And you need to pick your spots when you're going to do it. Because if you do it at the wrong time or in the wrong way or overspend in one area that you, you think, oh, gosh, I have this need, but you overreach, you're going to regret it down the road. And I think we've been pretty disciplined over time, which has enabled us to do the things necessary to compete. So um, if you're not disciplined, you can find yourself a little behind the eight ball. And we don't want to be in that position. As I look out uh, to the crowd, and it's packed here tonight at Ballpark Village, you see generations of fans. And it's what makes this place so special, as you know. And one of the things that stands out for me is you having a chance to work with your son, and obviously your father had such a rich tradition in the game of baseball. What, what is that like, being able to work hand in hand uh, with Bill? Well, it's great. Um, you know, I was fortunate to grow up in a baseball family. My father was a career baseball man. He never had any other job or any other uh, investment, really. I mean, baseball was his life. Uh, so as a young kid, I, I grew up in it. Um, and was able to, to work for him uh, for a number of years over at Cincinnati Reds uh, when he moved over there. Uh, so I think I, I, was, I was lucky to have that experience. And uh, when we bought the club and uh, Bill was getting out of school and had, had some early jobs elsewhere, to get him in the organization was, was a real treat. And uh, we have a great working relationship, of course, uh, you know, a strong personal relationship. Absolutely. How much do you fans enjoy Ballpark Village? This is like the crown jewel of St. Louis when you think about the ballpark and then right across the street, you have Ballpark Village. And let's bring out the man behind that, the architect behind that, the Cardinals president. Give him a huge round of applause. Bill DeWitt III. Hey Dan. Good to have you here. And as you look out, and this time last year, I remember you and I were going around in hard hats this time last year, walking around Ballpark Village. But here we have an event like this tonight. You know, what is it like for you to see this all come to fruition? It's really fun. I just, I had a flashback just walking over here tonight because this time last year it was hard hats and boots and cold. And, and now it's a beautiful, warm facility with all of us enjoying a uh, hot stove talk, and I think um, you know that's what we envisioned. It, it's um, it's obviously great for these public forums and events, but it doubles also as a great restaurant venue, a, a studio, uh, and, and of course our Hall of Fame museum, a views into the ballpark. So all those things are um, 
you know, it's been something that we've dreamed about for a long time, and to, and to see it come to fruition, to see people enjoy the space, it, it gives me a lot of gratification. Tell us a little bit about the Hall of Fame, what's in there now, and what's planned coming up in 2015? Well, the Hall of Fame is um, about 10,000 square feet, which is huge for a team museum. And it's a Hall of Fame and a museum. Of course, we just, um, you heard about the process for electing new members of the Hall of Fame a little earlier, but um, the museum itself is, uh, has an incredible display of, of Cardinals memorabilia. You know, we've collected now for 20 years at um, my father's um, guidance. We've, we've been out in the auction markets getting things that we didn't have in our collection or prodding players to give us stuff when big moments happen. And so it's a great collection. And we also have a temporary exhibit. And right now there's a, an exhibit on Stan Musial, which uh, will be around for about another year, and then we'll rotate it and keep it fresh. For fans coming to the ballpark next year, any changes uh, just looking at it aesthetically with the ballpark and what's happening across the street? Yeah, we're, we're working on a number of projects. Actually, we have a big capital budget this year. Uh, we're going to expand the Champions Club and make that a little bit bigger. Uh, which will change, you know, sort of the look and feel of that. Um, you know, we've, we've got a bunch of things that you don't see much. We, we repainted all the, or we're in the process of repainting all that structural steel. You know, it's a little bit of a messy project, but it's uh, keeping things fresh. Um, we put a bunch of windows in some places and, and closed them to give a, the fans a little more comfort and there's some, some spaces in the ballpark. And then a bunch of other little things, whether it's flooring upgrades or seating upgrades, fixing broken stuff. Ten years on now, well, nine years in the in the ballpark, and you start to think about the things you have to do to keep it up to date. I asked your dad about this before you came on. Now I'll ask you, what's it like working with your dad? It's really fun. I mean, you know, to have <laughs> baseball connects people, right? And um, any sport, really. And for us to be able to talk baseball as a conversation starter every time we talk, and then to have it morph into things that relate to the business that we're both working on, it's just a great way to to relate to your dad and um, and we try to bring in our siblings my you know I have th three brothers and sisters and and get them involved too and my mom who's out here it, it's just, it's a family conversation and um, and I just, I just feel very fortunate to have that um, as something that um, dictates how we relate to one another on a daily basis and finally a high percentage of our fans even those that are here tonight are in for the uh, the caravans and the winter warm-up and whatnot and they come through in the weekends. And, and you have done a remarkable job in terms of marketing and trying to make it fun, not just to see the game, but also to have some of the other programs around the ballpark and some of those special weekends. Uh, for fans that don't know, in 2015, marketing-wise, what are some of the things that you're working on for the fans? Well, there are a lot of, I mean, once again, we have an incredible giveaway list. And um, we released that recently, but, um, you know, you know, we were continuing our, our announcers program with a little uh, thing of um, Harry Carey as a Cardinal. Uh, that's one of my favorites. It'll have a little chip with one of his famous calls as a Cardinal. A lot of people forget that, that, you know, he kind of finished as a Cub, but he had a long career as a Cardinal. Uh, kind of reminds me of Bruce Souter. You know, I still think of him as a Cardinal, although he had a little Cub action. But, um, and then just our whole philosophy is, is to do giveaway items that really are of the highest quality. And we even supplement our marketing budget to make sure that those things are of the highest quality. And so, and we also have theme nights where we, we do a little micro marketing to where, you know, you can come if you're a fan of, um, you know, Chuck Berry, we do a Chuck Berry bobblehead or things like that, uh, special to St. Louis. So we really try to make it something that drives interest and people when they come and they wait in line, they get that bobblehead, it was worth the wait. Believe me, folks, these guys care about you, and they appreciate what you do for Cardinal Nation. Give them a round of applause, please. The DeWitts, we're going to ask them to stay up here for just a moment. We'll take a quick time out, and when we come back, we'll visit with the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. Mike Matheny will join us. Cardinals Hot Stove Live on Fox Sports Midwest and KMOX. Hey, Cardinals fans, need tires? There are 45 locally owned and operated independent tire dealers with top brand tires to choose from. Find your St. Louis area dealer at itdroll.com. 
<coughs> Your cold doesn't rest, but now you can. <sighs> Coldies daytime, nighttime quick melts dissolve quickly to shorten your cold. Nighttime quick melts shorten your cold, plus help you fall asleep and wake up naturally. Coldies zinc ions released in your mouth inhibit the cold virus from replicating, making Coldies the number one pharmacist recommended brand. I'm Ted Carcass, CEO, and I guarantee Coldies will shorten your cold or your money back. No questions asked. Hey, Cardinals fans, need tires? There are 45 locally owned and operated independent tire dealers with top brand tires to choose from. Find your St. Louis area dealer at itdroll.com. Better deals, better tire brands, and a better way to buy them. That's your neighborhood NTB. Right now, buy three tires, get one free when you get them installed. Choose from Goodyear, Nitto, Cooper, and other brand tires. Then save even more with our special financing. Buy three tires, get one free instantly. It's one more way we make tire buying easy. NTB Tire and Service Centers. That's all you need. The DirecTV customers you're about to meet have allowed us to switch their service to Dish Network. The Hopper says that it can do all these great things and record up to six shows at once, but it's doing these things that I don't want it to do or I don't need it to do. There's certain times of day, primetime I guess, is when half the DVR is reserved for recording all the primetime shows, even though we don't watch any of the network primetime shows generally. You would think it should just be allowed to watch what we want to watch, but instead Dish Network tells us what we want to record. Cardinals Hot Stove Live is brought to you by Chevrolet. Get great offers on 2015 Chevy models. Find new roads at your Mid-America Chevrolet dealer. Ladies and gentlemen, look up there. Colton Wong and Jason Hayward in our green room. Back inside Fox Sports Midwest Live in Ballpark Village. This is Cardinals Hot Stove Live. Ladies and gentlemen, he has led your team to the National League Championship Series in his first three years. Your manager, Mike Matheny. <laughs> Ladies, relax, please. And some of you guys out there as well. Now, Mike, we just saw Jason Hayward back there. You've got Colton Wong coming back. You've got a good team coming back. How do you feel about the 2015 Cardinals? Well, I, um, I don't know if we could be any more excited, Dan. And uh, a year ago, I think a, a, lot of, a lot of people were looking towards uh, the Cardinals and, and um, and making a strong run, and, and uh, we, we didn't disappoint. And I think this year we've made some great moves to reinforce what we already have. And, and you bring in some quality people that, that have the talent to uh, do some big things. And I, I think we saw some young guys take it to another level. You mentioned Colton. We saw, saw Matt Adams, and, and we just know that these young guys are, are on the brink of some great things. And to bring in uh, a veteran presence like Jason is just going to add to that. You don't do that, though, without ownership buying in and Bill DeWitt and his group, they buy in. So you know every year you come to spring training, you've got a pretty good chance to win. Yeah, and that expectation's been here for a long time, and, and we realize that uh, that, that expectation's a compliment, a compliment to uh, what the guy's been able to do, a compliment to this organization and, and what Bill and, and the ownership group have, have been able to put together. And that's just a, a high level of expectation. And uh, some people look at that as pressure. We look at it as a, as a great opportunity to, to prove people right. And, and this isn't the, the same all across the board. There, there are plenty of organizations that are so hand hand tied uh, and you realize that it's just a matter of surviving but this is a, this is a different place it's a it's a place that uh, it starts at the top and they set the tone for what's expected and it filters all the way down into our clubhouse bill you had one of the great managers ever in tony la Russa. you took a chance on mike Matheny. that chance has paid off handsomely why did you know that mike was the right guy at that time well, of course, Mike had been with the Cardinal organization, so we, we had a lot of background with Mike. But uh, we did a pretty thorough uh, interview process with a number of good candidates. And um, after we met with Mike and, and heard, heard about how he would manage a club, we all looked at each other and said, 
we've got our man. Well, under Mike Matheny, take a look at these numbers, folks, and just how good Mike Matheny has been and what the Cardinals have done under his leadership. Look at that. Second in the National League overall record, the NL Central titles, the League Championship Series appearances, the One World Series appearance. And I, I was saying this, Mike, to uh, to Bill. I said, it's, it's what have you done for me lately, though? So can you get over the hump and win that World Series title? Yeah, there was, uh, there was one column missing there. Um, but uh, I, I've been fortunate. I, I spent a little time with uh, Whitey Herzog last night, and, and I remember, uh, and also with Red Shandies, and uh, they've given great advice. They said, uh, you know, one of the greatest keys to, to managing is having good players. And it's pretty simple. And uh, fortunately, you, you see some uh, pretty uh, impressive numbers of what our, our teams have been able to do because we've been incredibly blessed with great talent and uh, in an atmosphere where guys can thrive. So we have uh, one more thing to accomplish on that list for sure, and hopefully not just one. We've asked our fans that came through Ballpark Village if they did have a question for our panel to tweet at us, and we have some of those questions. This is uh, for you, Mike, and, and Bill, if you want to jump in as well. But where is Michael Waka in terms of his health and in terms of making a start every fifth day? And we appreciate Evan Gorman for joining us here at Ballpark Village. Well, um, saw Michael last night, and uh, he's, he's out doing a caravan right now, and uh, everything's pointing in a great direction. He feels good. Uh, he, he was able to go through the rehab process, and uh, you know, one of those kind of unique injuries that we've had to be real careful with. And, and I think we, we as an organization, did, did a great job under uh, Bill and, and Moe's leadership of, of trying to put a game plan together not to put a young player in a compromised position uh, when he's got a, a, an injury that we're just not that, that comfortable with. And uh, so we backed off, and Michael was, was ready uh, towards the end of the, the season, obviously into the playoffs, and, and has had a, a full off season to get prepared. And he's chomping. He, he can't wait to get out there and show what he can do and, and continue what he did the season before one of the lasting images that I take away from having seen Mike Matheny play and obviously manage now unfortunately was dealing with the death of Daryl Kyle a great teammate and it was at Wrigley Field and I remember seeing your hand touching his jersey and unfortunately now we're dealing with the death of, of Oscar Tavares and you're all wearing the pens the OT 18 what did you do as a manager to reach out to your guys once the incident took place and, and just making sure guys were okay? Well, Dan, it's, it's, uh, it's still a healing process, and I think everybody deals with loss and grief uh, in their own individual way. But uh, the, the thing that the organization is able to do is we got down there to uh, support the family and also spend some time with some of the players like Carlos Martinez and, and uh, really just uh, reach out to the guys. That's all you can do this time. And we have guys like Colton in Hawaii, and we have guys in Puerto Rico and in and, and the Dominican Republic. It's, it's really hard to bring everybody together. So we're still actually looking forward to uh, getting together as a club, and there's still some morning uh, to go on and this just isn't and I think we, we all have to always get back to the fact that it wasn't just uh, a very talented baseball player this was a friend a very close friend and teammate over many years and uh, a loss like that especially for young guys who've never been through that before uh, there's no uh, template there, there's no uh, way to go about this perfectly so we're going to have some tough conversations going through the spring and and hopefully uh, just continue to grow grow as people and, and start uh, you know having some tough conversations about about decisions too and, and hope these guys uh, continue to learn and, and, and grow and improve and Bill I'm not sure you'd want anybody else to lead in a time like that than this guy right here would you agree uh, no question about that Mike uh, you talked before about what a good job he's done and how we selected him but above anything else he's a terrific leader and has the respect of the team and all the players and the organization so you know he's just had a great presence and that means a lot when you go through a tragedy the DeWitts will let you go. We're going to keep Mike, though, on the hot seat. But thank you for being with us, and you'll be back with us later in the show. You didn't know that, but you Thanks, will. Guys. Because of the loss of Oscar, you had to make quick moves. One of those is Jason Hayward, who comes to St. Louis. I'll put you on the spot, Mike. You know, where does he hit in this lineup? You guys want to know, don't you? Yeah. I just told Jason backstage that you were going to ask that question. So, and I told him that when he gets out here, he can answer it. But, um, 
You know, it, it's fun because we, we kind of got into that conversation with Colton back there, too. We have so many guys who, who could hit in different different spots in our lineup. And, and, and they bring such different skill sets to the, the table. But what Jason does have is he has the ability to drive the ball, and we know that's a premium. Uh, he does have the ability to get on base, too, so that gives him some flexibility. So as we head into spring, uh, we see some different options, but we're not going to hand tie ourselves to what exactly it looks like until we get everybody together. But I see Jason in a production spot in our lineup, um, but I also know that if he, he just puts together good at-bats, it's going to be a huge pr production year no matter where he's placed in that lineup. I would say that one of the hardest, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the hardest things that you have to do is to keep the message fresh, keep guys engaged every single year. And this is a team that's been at the NLCS now four consecutive years and three under Mike. So what's the message going into 2015 that you make sure players aren't complacent and guys are ready to go? Well, I think uh, you look at each year individually and, and you start to think about the things that, that were accomplished. And, and the first place we go as a team is first uh, to the past. And, and I know that we didn't end up winning uh, the, the big game like we wanted to. We didn't end up bringing home that World Series championship. But you also have to be honest evaluators. And, and the way that our guys competed all season long, the way that they fought and just kept their nose down when it wasn't coming easy. There's years that it does. You, you look at the 2013 season and we just ended up getting, getting hits with guys on base all the time. We were able to get that run production. Last year was a fight. And, and, and you have to, to tip your hat to the way the guys continue to compete. Um, with that being said, moving forward, um, there, there's an opportunity here to put together a legacy style uh, of run and, and the, the way that these guys have competed for so long since that 11, 11 World Championship, uh, they've just kept the pedal down and now's not a time to back off. Love hearing that. There are many managers that play or manage in this game that would love to do what you've done in three years already. What's been the best moment that stands out for Mike Matheny over the last three years? You know, I, I don't think there's uh, one particular moment. I mean, obviously, there's some, some games that stick out in your mind, and, and it's usually those character wins, those, uh, those ones where they dig down deep. And, you know, the first one that I experienced uh, was, in, was in 2012 when we came back from a 6 nothing loss uh, to or 6, six nothing deficit to, to the Washington Nationals. And, and uh, watch guys just continue to fight, watching Adam Wainwright lead that team despite giving up the six runs. Uh, and, and the same thing, in, uh, th this past postseason is going to go down in my memory, too, with what our guys were able to do against the Clayton Kershaw and a very, very good uh, L.A. Dodger team. Um, just defying odds, uh, going out and just continue to play the game, play the game the right way, and I believe represent this, uh, this fan base the way they deserve to be represented. Can you give our fans an idea of, of some of the big competitions uh, that we may see in spring training? And I, I'm not looking to put you on the spot with individual guys, but where do you see the best competition going into spring training? Well, I think it's been very clear. Uh, we're, we're giving a young pitcher in Carlos Martinez an opportunity to take that fifth starting spot. Um, and and uh, we're excited to watch how he's growing. And I was able to go back to the Dominican Republic a second time and just talk with Carlos and, and, and listen to, to how he's adjusting with uh, obviously a very, very close loss, but also uh, just the, the urgency and, and, the, and the message about how, how short this, this life can be, not just the baseball life. And, and uh, you can see he's a very determined young player and nobody who's, who's seen him throw a pitch has any doubt of the, the kind of stuff that Carlos has. Uh, so uh, that's going to be interesting to watch because he's going to have Marco Gonzalez right on his heels. We're going to have a couple other, like a Tyler Lyons. We're going to have a, uh, Jaime Garcia who could be healthy. We have a group of guys that are going to push him. Um, so I, I think that's going to be interesting. To, and then always watching how our bullpen comes together. We brought in some nice pieces with Jordan Walden and, and Matt Belial um, to help uh, get us to Rosie once again. Those are always going to be uh, interesting things, how they fall together as well. But also a lot of our backup roles. We lose a, a very, very uh, popular player, not just with our fans, but in our clubhouse with Daniel Descalzo, uh, just a guy that played the game the right way. And uh, trying to have those backup roles uh, to, to, to figure out what our bench is going to look like is going to be a fierce competition. You mentioned Jaime Garcia, kind of a forgotten man, right? But healthy. And who knows? He's kind of the wild card right now, isn't he? Well, he's one of those guys, and, and, and Yachty's always said it this way, too. He's, he's the one guy that walks out there every single time and has the ability to throw a no-hitter. 
and uh, he, he's he's got uh, just a, a, an interesting repertoire of pitches. He's got movement that really not too many people in the league have, and, and hitters uh, have a tough time timing him up. So uh, he is a, a wild card for us, and obviously it hasn't been the, the past uh, couple seasons that he was hoping for, but he is one of the, the guys that has to play into our thoughts here, and, and hopefully we get him healthy and figure out how he can help us. You have added a St. Louis guy to your coaching staff. Unfortunately, he was part of the 04 Red Sox. We don't need to remind people about that. Billy Miller, who won a, a batting title with the Boston Red Sox, to Smet High School, uh, went to Southwest Missouri State, now Missouri State. You have added him to your coaching staff. He, he's a unique guy, and it should really add to this team. Yeah, I think uh, we, we, we got better, and uh, we just keep bringing in good guys. We hate to see any of our guys leave. I've uh, had an opportunity to promote uh, David Bell, who had that position, uh, to be the bench coach now, and so it's going to be a, a great challenge for, for uh, us to see how we work together to help the guys. But uh, Billy Miller's a... He's a star. Uh, he was a star player, and uh, he's got that, that special something as a coach. And, and talking to people within the league, people that know him well, he just has an impact and figures out how, how to uh, make people around him better. And that's kind of that thing we're always looking for, whether it's players, whether it's people on the coaching staff. Uh, how can we make the people around us better? And we know if we're doing that, we're pushing in the right direction. And Billy Miller, uh, I believe he's a game changer. When you look back to last year, where did you think the club needed to improve going into this season? And have you done that? And tell us a little bit about those parts of where you think the team improved. Well, I was talking with John Mabry last night, and uh, he told me that once we uh, told guys to, to, uh, to have the freedom to hit home runs, uh, and we waited till October to do that. So we, we didn't let anybody hit for power until October. So I think we're going to... That was by design? That was what we told them. They were very obedient. Um, so we're going to change the plan this year a little bit and uh, let them let them swing for the fences a little bit. But, you know, I, I think just in general, I mean, you look at, at those highs and lows and, and you have those seasons where everything clicks and other seasons when they don't, the ones that they don't and you figure out how to get it done are special. And, and, and I believe there's a happy medium between what we saw in 13 and what we saw in 14 to what our offense can do. And I think it's just going to be the consistent production from our offense that ends up taking a lot of pressure off of our bullpen and our starting pitchers. We can't continue to, uh, to have the kind of seasons that we had last year with one and two run games every single night where we're beating up our pen and really pushing our starters. Uh, so hopefully we're going to get uh, that kind of production that I know that we can have. And uh, with that run production, it also helps out our pitching. I know a bullpen comes together as you go along. We know that Trevor Rosenthal is your closer. Uh, looking ahead at the eighth and maybe the seventh innings, you, you talked about Walden. Uh, you talked about Belial. There's other guys that could fill that role. And again, I understand it's early. We're January and things play themselves out. Uh, but with the loss of Pat Neshek, where do you look right now on paper at the seventh and eighth innings? Well, we're definitely looking uh, at, at Jordan Walden as a guy who, who can not just pitch the eighth, but also can throw the ninth and has done it effectively. So he gives us some flexibilities on days where we, maybe we just don't keep riding Trevor like we have. Um, but we're, we're going to have to try and, and, and figure out everything in front of that. I believe Seth Manus has the ability to come in and pitch even more significant innings than he did last year. Randy Choate's going to play into that. Hopefully we have a, a healthy uh, seventh Kevin Segrist who, who can help get us to that, that eighth inning. Um, and but then also with Matt Belisle, who's been a very, very versatile player, kind of done what Seth Manus has done in the past, very durable, uh, can come in and pitch in a, uh, quite a few different uh, situations. So we have some, uh, some good leadership down there. We have some, some good... Uh, veteran experience and hopefully what we saw last year uh, with with Trevor uh, is going to continue to improve you got to remember last year was the first year that Trevor was our full-time closer that's not an easy role to get used to and as difficult of a season that anybody could have as a closer because we just didn't give him a lot of run support ladies and gentlemen your manager Mike Matheny <laughs> Mike is gonna stick around we're gonna welcome a couple of other guys to the stage here at Ballpark Village in Fox Sports Midwest Live. Jason Hayward, Colton Wong, those two come your way next. Hey, Cardinals fans, need tires? There are 45 locally owned and operated independent tire dealers with top brand tires to choose from. Find your St. Louis area dealer at itdroll.com. In St. Louis, baseball season begins in January at the Cardinals Winter Warm-Up. Current Redbirds and Hall of Famers will be there to sign autographs and every dollar raised benefits Cardinals care. Start the season and get your tickets now at cardinals.com slash winter warm-up. 
Hi, I'm John Mozeliak. Join me and the Foundation Fighting Blindness on February 11th. We'll honor Trevor Rosenthal and the Muni's president and CEO, Denny Reagan. It's Dining in the Dark at the Hilton St. Louis at the ballpark. A blowtorch reaches temperatures of more than 6,000 degrees, hot enough to melt steel. But Devontae Smith Rivera only needs 360 degrees to burn his defenders and drain another three. Triple Head, Saturday on Fox Sports 1. Before every pass. Before every lap. Before every game. This is America's Pre-Game. Join Mike Hill and Molly McGrath as they take you game by game across America. We're ready to get you warmed up for a huge night in sports. It's the only place for serious sports fans. Your night begins with America's Pre-Game. Weeknights on Fox Sports 1. Hey, Cardinals fans. Need tires? There are 45 locally owned and operated independent tire dealers with top brand tires to choose from. Find your St. Louis area dealer at itdroll.com. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. We're live inside Ballpark Village at Fox Sports Midwest Live. The unofficial kickoff to the 2015 Major League Baseball season here in St. Louis. And let's take a closer look at our next guest. And Wong hits a high fly ball out to deep right. Grand slam! A tough play for Wong on the backhand. And he got it. Wong hits it out to deep right. Walk it off, baby! Colton Wong wins it for St. Louis. Wong going out. Did he make the catch? Ladies and gentlemen, your second baseman, Colton Long. You know, we just saw the highlight of your walk-off in the NLCS. Do you realize when you threw the helmet, you almost hit the umpire? To my defense, I think, uh, you know, he wasn't paying attention to me throwing the helmet. And he saw it, you know, kind of on the, you know, on, on the side. So, you know, I think he flinched and uh, made me look bad, like I was a bad person. But, you know, I definitely, I threw it maybe 10 feet, you know, to the side of him. So it wasn't close at all. Give him a round of applause. That, I'm telling you what, what a great moment that was. Colton, you know, you didn't have professional baseball, at least the major league level in Hawaii, and now you're part of what we call Cardinal Nation. What is this like every year to come through St. Louis and be a part of the caravans and the winter warm-up to see this crowd here tonight? What is it like from a player's perspective? Oh, it's amazing. Uh, I was talking to, you know, Jason back there, trying to inform him of... Uh, you know, what's, what he's about to be a part of. Uh, you know, being a part of the Cardinal Nation, you get to be a part of fans like this who come out, you know, in the freezing cold to, uh, you know, see us. And, uh, you know, they're here, you know, on opening day when it's cold, and they're here, you know, we're in, we're in the playoffs every single year. So, uh, you know, it's definitely a fun place to be and, uh, you know, definitely a blessing to play at. How much do you think you build on what you did at the end of last year going into this year? Um, a, a lot. You know, definitely coming off the year that I had before with getting picked off to doing what I did this year. Um, you know, I can come walking in with my head held high, you know, a little more, you know, confident in myself knowing that I finally belong here and I finally uh, am a Cardinal. Mike, you've been around this game a long time. How good is this young man? Well, since he's sitting right here, I'll probably you get better be nice. Um, now, he uh, he's got to work on his on his uh, dress code a little bit, and, uh, but uh, 
You know, you, you come across uh, you come across a lot of talented players, and um, you always you hear so much when they're coming up through the system, and you try and figure out whether they've got the, the kind of skill that's going to fit in. And and then every once in a while, you come across some some special players, and and uh, the ones that kind of put it all together, and they have the heart to go along with the head, and they got the talent uh, to back it all up. And and uh, Colton did a great job this year of, of really proving it to everybody that uh, he's uh, not just a big league player, but he's got the ability to do some big things on the big stage. And I, we were just so proud to watch uh, him get to that big stage and, and pull off some of the, the greatest at-bats we've seen from a young player in a long time in the postseason play. And I think it's just uh, the platform for where he takes it from now. We know that Colt Wong will be in the lineup this year. Let's take a look at your new right fielder in 2015 as well. Jason Hayward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you expect this? <laughs> to welcome officially Jason to St. Louis, Mike Matheny has something that he would like to present to Jason Hayward here tonight. Jason, you have something for Mike? And Mike Matheny will wear number 26 this year. <laughs> Grab a microphone there, Jason. Let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, for those that don't know, uh, Mike, of course, had worn number 22 for years. Jason Hayward wants to wear number 22. Mike obliged. But tell us the story behind number 22. It's very, very important to you. Um, you know, for me, uh, my high school, I had a teacher. She was sort of like a team mom. She was involved in the sports. She was involved in cheerleading, softball, basketball. And her son played baseball, and he was a, a teammate of mine. And you know, we won the state championship uh, my sophomore year. He went on to graduate in 2006. I graduated in 2007. Um, he wore number 22 on that team, and you know, the year that I was a senior in high school, he got in a car accident and passed away. And I was in her class, her name is Miss Rustin, and you know, that was my senior year, of course, and you know, she missed some time, but when she came back, you know, I did whatever I could to look out for her, because she was always looking, looking out for everyone. You know, she was hard on us, wanted, wanted the best out of everyone. And, um, 2009 came around, and in the fall league, I wore number 22 out of out of nowhere. I wasn't really thinking about it, and then I kind of put two and two together and and, and said I should uh, try and wear 22 in the major leagues. And I took her my fall league jersey back to the high school one day and said, "This is the number I'm going to be wearing in the major leagues for you and Andy," and uh, it just worked out perfectly. What you'll find out about this man, he's a hell of a ball player, but he's also class. Jason Hayward. When, when you got the word that you had been traded, what was your reaction to finding out you were coming to St. Louis? So, um, <laughs> I, was, I was working out in the gym, and uh, I knew I was going to get traded that day. Uh, the Braves had kind of let me know, gave me a heads up. Take the phone call, uh, it's assistant GM, and he says, you know, Jason, uh, you know, just want to let you know, you know, thank you for everything you've done for us and uh, the person you've been on and off the field and things like that. But he said, I want to let you know you've been traded. And I was kind of 
Wade ain't like, where have I been traded to? And he said, we traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. I was like, thank goodness. <laughs> No, that was, that was definitely a big, big sigh of relief to know I was getting traded to a, to a great organization and someone that knows how to compete. You said, thank goodness. And why did you say thank goodness about St. Louis? Because, uh, you know, for one, I don't have to face this pitching staff anymore. Um, but, no, just did a lot of hard-fought battles uh, playing against them uh, personally, you know, when I was with the Braves. But uh, just watching this team and organization play throughout October, each year, they, they have a mindset and a goal at the end of each season, and I'm glad to be a part of that. What have you found out about the organization, number one, and also these great fans of the city of St. Louis? So what have I found out? Yes, what have you found out about it? Um, it's just very family-oriented, man. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very homey feel. You know, the organization sets the presidents. I feel like uh, the fans know what to expect. The players know what to expect, and uh, for me, it, it sounds like an awesome place to show up for work every day and have fun. Mike said he knew I was going to ask him about where he wanted you to hit in the lineup, and he said, well, go ahead and ask Jason. So, all right, I'll ask you, where do you want to hit in the lineup? He said he was going to hit you if you asked that question. Um, no, but for me, um, just wherever, wherever, whatever it takes to get a, a W at the end of the day, I, I don't care. You know, I'm a, I'm a team player. Everyone will find out, out, out about me uh, a bit, very quickly. I know Mike will have his preference with uh, where he likes us to gel and fit in, but that, that's what I'm about. So whatever it takes to get the job done. Have you heard from a lot of the uh, other players on the team once you were traded? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Colton reached out to me um, you know, via Twitter. Um, Wainwright, um, Holiday. Lance Lynn, uh, Matt Carpenter, John Jay. Everyone reached out and you know, welcomed me in and said, uh, let us know if you need anything. Uh, we want you to feel at home. We're glad to have you. Colton, when you, uh, when you heard that Jason Hayward was a St. Louis Cardinal, give me your reaction. I was excited. Uh, when you get someone of this guy's caliber, it's definitely awesome to have. Uh, you, know, you know he's going to bring everything to the table. He, you know, he's a hard-nosed player, and he, he's proven. You know, and having that guy in right field is definitely going to help us tremendously. Hey, by the way, where do you want to hit in the lineup? <laughs> as long as I'm in the lineup. As long as we, yeah, 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 yeah. It's only us up here, and we're only going in 44 states on KMOX and throughout the country on Fox Sports Midwest. It's no big deal. We're not going to put you on the spot too much. Uh, Mike, you look at this lineup. How good is it in your mind with now Jason Hayward, uh, Colton Wong, that's now a guy that's relaxed, comfortable at this level. How good is it going to be? Well, I think you just you start at the top and you make your way down. And, and uh, if you were a pitching staff, as Jason was talking about, a, a good pitching staff facing a good lineup, uh, you know, where's your break in that lineup? And uh, it's one guy after another that can do some serious damage. And, and we've got the guys that can get on base. We've got the guys that can drive in runs and, and hit the ball with some authority. And, and uh, we, we bring a component of speed with, with the two guys that we have up here. And, and uh, we're going to try and maximize everything we have. But it's a very well-rounded attack. And, and uh, you start talking about some of the players we have on our club. Um, and I'll take both of these uh, for example. I don't think we've seen uh, the best of what Colton Wong can do, and I don't believe we've seen the best of what Jason Hayward could do yet. It's going to be fun. You're into music, are you not? Big time. Okay, give us a little idea of what your music background is like. Music background? Well, you're into music. I know that. We're going to get to know you a little bit more, so let's get some of the personal stuff to the side. I mean, anything except for, like, heavy metal rock, I'm, I'm down for uh -huh. it. So, I mean, if you give me some Jason Aldean, Eric Church, or some T.I., Jay-Z. Okay. Just, I mean, mix it up, Lana Del Rey. I mean, I'm, I'm down for anything. It's all about the mood. See, I had to bring this up because we had a, uh, a folk, uh, or a gentleman, and many of the folks have uh, tweeted at us, and he says, and I don't know why this is, but we always get asked, what are the walk-up songs going to be? Okay, people want to know your walk-up song. So this is from Nate Shank. What's your walk-up song? Well, I mean, for me, I kind of make that decision late. But uh, if he can make it here for opening day, then he'll, he'll be able to hear him. Really? Now, Mike, you get into the walk-up songs. This is a big deal in the clubhouse, obviously, right? I mean, outside the lineup. Yeah, I, I just know a bad one when I hear it. And uh, 
whatever it is that Matt Carpenter walks up to every time. I, I like country music, but I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, and, and some of the rap stuff, it takes me about two months to try and figure out the words. Um, but we, we learn a lot about these guys when they, uh, they feature their songs, so I'm excited to hear what he has to bring. Folks, you're going to see a right fielder that is the best outfielder defensively in the game of baseball. I know in talking with some of those that are around the Atlanta Braves, they said, Dan, you don't realize until you watch this guy play every day how good he is in the outfield and how much pride that he takes defensively. You take a lot of pride in what you do defensively. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, hitting is one thing, and it's easy to, you know, wear a smile on your face, I feel like, when everything is going well. But on the defensive side of the ball, you know, that's, that's definitely a, a big part of the team game. Um, you know, everyone pulls their weight. And for me, I feel like I try and impact the game on both sides every night. And, and right field, that's, uh, you know, that's no different for me. That helps out the pitching staff. That helps out, uh, you know, the psyche of your team, and it can build some momentum. Have you heard about what opening day is like in St. Louis? I've heard Clydesdales. I've heard uh, Hall of Famers. I've heard retired uh, players. But, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. As we go to break, folks, give him an idea of the ovation he's going to get on opening day in Colton Wong and Mike Matheny. We're back with more in a moment on Fox Sports Midwest and KMOX. Cardinals Hot Stove Live. Hey, Cardinals fans. Need tires? There are 45 locally owned and operated independent tire dealers with top brand tires to choose from. Find your St. Louis area dealer at itdroll.com. You're here to buy a car. What would help is simply being able to recognize a fair price. That's never really been possible. But along comes a radically new way to buy a car called True Car. And now it is. True Car has pricing data on every make and model. So all you have to do is search for the car you want. There it is. Now you're an expert in less than a minute. This is how car buying was always meant to be. This is True Car. Hey, Cardinals fans. Need tires? There are 45 locally owned and operated independent tire dealers with top brand tires to choose from. Find your St. Louis area dealer at itdroll.com. The DirecTV customers you're about to meet have allowed us to switch their service to Dish Network. Even though we're paying about the same, we get less. We get channels that we are used to seeing in DirecTV. We don't have it on a comparable package with Dish. What we found out was we were missing some of our favorites. NFL Network wasn't available. Animal Planet, also not available. Nat Geo, not available. And we didn't have Bravo either. All channels that we had on DirecTV with a similar package. better tire brands, and a better way to buy them. That's your neighborhood NTB. Right now, buy three tires, get one free when you get them installed. Choose from Goodyear, Nitto, Cooper, and other brand tires. Then save even more with our special financing. Buy three tires, get one free instantly. It's one more way we make tire buying easy. NTB Tire and Service Centers. That's all you need. Cardinals Hot Stove Live is presented by your locally owned independent tire dealer, someone you can trust. We've had some fun tonight here at Ballpark Village, have we not? <laughs> Cardinals Hot Stove Live. We're going to take some questions from the crowd and then wrap up the show. The DeWitts have rejoined us, and sir, the podium is yours. This is a question for Jason. Is there any other uniform in Major League Sports that you'd rather wear than the birds on the bat? I mean, in, you said in, in baseball or? All of Major League Sports. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, um, honestly, you know, this team asked for me to be here, so I wouldn't rather wear any other jersey than this one. One of the uh, Twitter questions that we have, by the way, is for you, Jason, and it's a, a simple one. What are you looking forward to the most coming to St. Louis? And I'm sure you've thought about this a lot. The, the fans, the, uh, the front office, the, the players, the coaches, the, everyone has the same mindset, and that's to play in October, so I'm looking forward to that. October baseball. Yes, sir. 
This question is to Jason. Um, being new in town, what is one thing you are looking forward to most about being in St. Louis? The fans, the winning. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to sound like a broken record, but for me, I, I can't wait to play baseball in front of this city and, uh, and, and have a lot of fun doing so. Couple more questions. Yeah, this question is from Mike Matheny. Mike, if uh, we acquire one of these pitchers that our names have been speculated to acquire, where would you place them in a rotation? Well, we uh, we get to spring training and look and look at what we have, and uh, you know we're, we're walking in with around 60 guys trying to pare it down to the, the best 25 to gives us a chance. And um, whoever it is that we have, and I'm going to tell you right now, I, I like the group that we have, and uh, any additions we can make, this team's always. Uh, always been at the forefront of, of trying to, to make a good deal and, and being aware of, of what makes sense on the baseball side and on the business side. And uh, we realize that if, uh, if we make additions, we'll figure out where that fits. Uh, but right now, as you're looking at the, uh, the depth that we have in our pitching staff, I like the guys we have, and I believe that it's a team that we can, and a pitching staff we can win with. Let's take one more question from the crowd, please. That young lady there. Hi, my question's for Jason. I know you just got here, but I'm going to put you on the spot. How much consideration are you going to give to signing an extension after your first year? Well, I'll, I'll just answer it this way. Um, you know, my, my former organization gave me an opportunity to play a game that I love and I've always loved since I was five or six years old, and I hope that I would love it so much I never want to leave. Well, here we are today. I'm in St. Louis, and I hope I love it so much that I never want to leave. Thank you for the questions. We appreciate it. We've got about two minutes to go, and then we're going to wrap things up. And I'm going to go down the line and ask all of you, and Jason has already answered this, but the DeWitts, Colt, and Mike, what are you looking forward to most in this upcoming season? And again, about two minutes to go. Well, I, it's always something where this time of year, with the weather and the winter warm-up and everything, we start looking forward to spring training. So right this second, I'm just looking forward to pitchers and catchers reporting. Sounds good. Mr. DeWitt. Well, uh, you know, I agree with uh, Bill there. I mean, this is the time. This, this is the kickoff to our season this weekend. And the fans get engaged. They get energized. Everybody's talking baseball. And, you know, it will be great to have the season start. But I think, you know, deep down in your heart of hearts, we want to get to the NLCS again for the fifth straight year. Jason, welcome to St. Louis. You've answered enough questions. My goodness. You've been the show tonight. Colton. Um, opening day. You know, getting out here uh, and uh, putting a whooping on someone. <laughs> putting a whooping on somebody, he said. I like that. Mike Matheny. Uh, I, I like uh, heading in early with, uh, with the end in sight, beginning with uh, what we have our, our, our views and our sights set on. And, uh, there's nothing else we have our sights set on except a parade, a parade, and that's at the end of October. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask these, these guys to stand up one more time and exit, but the baseball season is here. The DeWitts, Jason Hayward, Colton Wong, Mike Matheny. Give them a round of applause. A reminder on Fox Sports Midwest, we'll have 15 spring training games coming up. The first is on March 12th. Thank you for being here. Enjoy the winter warm-up. Enjoy spring training. Baseball, it's finally here. Thank you. <laughs>